Hello again painters and welcome. This is Debbie from acrylicpouring.com and I'm kind of excited but kind of nervous today because look what I've got. This is the first time I will ever have painted on an actual canvas. I've been waiting so long for my supplies to come from overseas um, but now they're here and I'm a little bit nervous. The canvas obviously is very different to the tiles and the hard surfaces like the canvas panels I've been pouring on before. So I'm a bit nervous to see what's going to happen today. Um, in the event that I mess up, it's not going to be so easy as it is with my tiles. I can just kind of wipe it off and they're done. So without further ado, I thought, well, let's just go for it. Let's try and do something that I've never done before. That's got lots of paints. It's really complicated. And if it all messes up, well, I can blame it on the process, not on the canvas, can't I? So what I'm planning to do is a flip cup and then two dirty pours. And I want to use all these whites, blues, greens and silvers. So let's go through what I've got. This is the Americana Bahama Blue, that's this one. Then this one is a Folk Art Metallic Blue Pearl and that is this one that you see just here. These two were really quite thin so by the time I'd added a pouring medium I didn't really need a whole lot of water and for my pouring medium I used around 25% to 20 to 25% of the Liquitex pouring medium to the volume of paint and then the same again with the flow troll so if I had a tablespoon of paint by the time I put the two pouring mediums in it made up to about a tablespoon and a half I think so in terms of other colors I've got a white a cobalt blue ultramarine blue this is a phthalo green then I've got a silver and this one is a, a paint I've mixed myself. This is half emerald green and half chrome yellow. And what I figured is I want something that's going to go from light to dark. So here I want more of the white um, and the lighter blues and a bit of silver. In the middle, my kind of mid-tones. And at the end, the darker, so like the, um, the ultramarine blue and the phthalo green and more of the cobalt. So I've got three cups. Actually, let's get the canvas out of the way so I don't have to mess that up. I've got three cups and I'm going to layer the paints in each of them, starting from lights through to darks. And we'll see what happens in the end. So let's start off with a little bit of white in all of them as a base. All of my paints um, are mixed in a similar way and they all have silicon oil. I've used this treadmill belt lubricant. This is 100% silicon, and I've put drops of silicon in all of the paints today. So let's see, let's go with some light colors. So I want lots more light in the first one, then a medium amount of light in the second one, and not much light in the third one. And we'll see how it works out. So this one's fairly light, so I want more light in the first one. Oops, medium in the second one and not much in the third one. Okay. Oh, I'm making a mess already. Where's my cloth? Okay. I want to come in a little bit closer. There we go. And then I've got this light green. Um, I'm not sure how it's going to work with the colour scheme, but we'll see. So I've got um, more of it in the first one, a medium amount in the second, not so much in the third. Okay. And then let's see, I've got my silver. I can't decide whether silver is light or dark. What do you think? I think in small amounts it looks light and shimmery, but if but when you look at it here, it actually looks like quite a, light, a, a dark colour. So I'm just going to put small amount in the first one, medium amount in the second one, larger amount in the third one, because we'll count that as a dark colour, I think. So let's go with a bit more white. Whoop. Oh. Seem to have a clog in my white. It's coming out a bit funky. Okay, never mind. It'll all work out well in the end. And then I've got my cobalt blue. I figure this is a medium colour. So I'm going to have a medium amount there, a large amount there, and a kind of a medium amount there. Uh, then I've got the ultramarine blue. It's dark. So I'm going to put a small amount there a medium amount there and a large amount in the bottom when I want the darker. Same with the phthalo green, I figure this is a dark colour. Small amount, medium amount 
heavier amount. Okay, so again, I've not done a canvas before. It's not going to be the same as with a tile. With a tile, um, the paint moves around a lot more, the surface is glossy, so um, I probably need more paint for the canvas than I do for the tile. Plus, it's that much larger. So let's go around again. Let's add a bit more white to each of them. So let's move all these things out of the way because I think I'm going to make a mess. So this will also be the first time where I'm going to just work flat on my surface. Normally I bring across um, this nasty plastic tray which is getting really full with old paint now. But this time I've just put the push pins in the bottom just to hold it on the surface and I'm going to work straight here which means the paint is going to go off all over the place. So the cups are looking really nice. I can't tell a whole lot of difference from looking at the sides as to whether they look light, medium or dark, but we will tell. So let's zoom out a little bit now so you can get a fuller view of what's going on. So what I'm going to do is a flip cup in the centre and then use these two to dirty pour around the outside. <laughs> we'll see what happens. So there we go. Canvas flip cup. Oh, I've already got a bit of escapage there. That's good. So shall I pour? before or after the flip. Let's do it before. I'm just gonna give it a little shimmy. And we'll pour it here and around. Oh, I think I've got gazoodles of paint. And the same here. Start in the corner. Make sure I've got plenty. Oh, I've got hundreds of paint. Well, it'll probably end up with lots on the, um, the plastic here, so I'm going to make sure everything's pushed out of the way. And then I'll get some little mini canvases or something over later on and pick up all my spillage. Okay, so that's my light and my dark cup there. And I'm ready for the flip. Whoop. So I'm not seeing that I'm getting a lot of light, medium and dark, but hey, it was worth trying. You never know. That looks nice in there, goodness. And I've got about a quarter of an inch of paint on this canvas already. Far, far, far too much paint. Hey, it looks nice. So, shall I give it a little torching before we start with anything? May as well. I've got some really good stuff here in the middle. The flip, as usual, has given me much better cells, although that's nice there, than the dirty pores. These are much smaller larger here though that's really nice i need to try and keep as much of this as possible but i've got so much paint i'm sure i'm gonna have to pour a lot away let's give it a blast okay so that's got rid of a lot of my air bubbles anyway so let's see i've got more coverage on the sides needed now because of course in the past where I've been using a tile. A tile only has a, a very small um, edge, so I've never had to worry way too much about covering my edges. This time, I've got much more to cover on the edges. So let's see how I get on with that. Ah, oh, I've got oodles of paint. Okay, let's give it plenty of runoff because otherwise it's gonna be far too thick on this canvas. So let me just keep going. I'm gonna put it all in one great big pile. So I've got far too much and then I will dip with that in a minute okay still tipping still tipping so it's not quite the look that I was going for because I haven't got the light medium and dark but really it's because I've just had far too much paint but again it was my first time you have to give me uh, a little bit of benefit of the doubt there for overdoing it. So let's pick up some of these patterns and I can just transfer them to my corners. I want to keep this pile kind of undisturbed if I can because I'm going to dip with that in a minute. But mostly because I had so much paint this is all covered in anyway. 
move it that. Wow. Okay, so I'm just going to put that slightly over here and then I'm going to move the camera over so that we're not in the way of that big puddle. So now I've got over my shock of having far, far, far too much pain, um, as usual. Um, I get a chance to actually look at this and oh, it's lovely. I've got so much really nice stuff. The silver is floating um, above in little veins in a lot of areas. And I really like this kind of diagonal motion that I've got going on. So I actually really like it. Although it's not as I intended, you know, these things never are, are they? As much as you plan, you know, unless you've done the same thing several times before, it's never gonna look how you imagined. But I really, really like it. The colors are beautiful. I didn't see the paint moving anywhere so I think I've um, tilted enough but let me just give it another torch now and um, bring out any more bubbles because I did tilt it so much. Yeah so quite a lot of um, little bubbles popping up through. I didn't get a lot of extra cells but what I have got is really nice, really very happy with those. So what I'm going to do now is get, actually get my small torch over and we'll see if we can torch certain um, detailed areas. So this is my little mini torch. It's like one of these little um, gas hob or barbecue lighters. And I like it because this one here um, can be a bit fierce and hard to get details. Whereas this one has just a, a small light flame at the bottom and I can direct it exactly into areas that I would like to um, activate if possible. So let's give it a go. That's working. And now I can just lightly put the flame over certain areas if I'd like to bring out cells in certain areas and not in others. That's good. And then maybe a little bit over in this corner. And it's also good for doing the sides because um, in the past the, the, the big torch gets too hot and will either melt the plastic cup or it melts the plastic sheet. But this one, I can just run it along the sides and it's much more manageable. It doesn't melt anything. And I can just direct it along the sides of the painting a lot easier. I'm just gonna come around the other side, do this back part. So let me bring you down and show you the details. I'm so excited, it's lovely. So there we go, my first actual painting on a proper canvas. And I'm really delighted with it. It's a little darker than I imagined, but it's got so many great details. It looks really lovely. And I like the, the diagonal composition of it. I think pouring all off onto that one corner and creating the diagonal lines across the picture is really good. So I'm hoping this will be um, drying exactly the same. There's quite a bit of paint still on here. Oops, card fall. So here I'm back again, just for a final look of the painting when it's wet. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it's gonna look exactly the same when it's dry. But as usual, if you hang around, I'll show you what it looks like when it's all dry, finished and varnished. So here it is, finished. It's all varnished, looking very, very glossy and shiny. And the metallics in this from the silver and, um, and everything, it looks really nice. When you move this one around in the light or walk past it, you can definitely see those metallic shimmering. It looks really, really nice. So I'm not sure whether it should go this way up or this way up or even this way up. You decide. Um, but thank you for following along with this video and uh, giving me all of your feedback and comments on the channel. It really makes it a pleasure to come in and wake up every morning and see all the comments that have been left. So thank you very much for that. And I look forward to seeing you in a future video.